Uh, I mean, obviously we didn't do too well against USC offensively. Uh, we uh, we didn't uh, run the ball well, and uh, I thought we did some positives in the throwing game. Um, had a hard time uh, putting together drives. Um, they were very athletic and uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of speed on the field with them. Uh, but uh, overall, we need to do a better job. And uh, Arkansas State, uh, you know, they're going to be uh, fast and athletic, just like they were in 2013. Uh, I mean, that's all I've seen so far from uh, tape. They're going to be fast and athletic. Running game, when you evaluated it, I mean, you know, score makes a lot of difference in how you have to attack, obviously, yeah. to get behind. But, but did you guys feel like that there were a lot of breakdowns in running game with with, with, the, with blocking and everything like that when you looked at the tape? Uh, there's there's a couple things where we just weren't really targeted right, and uh, but uh, you know, it's just kind of how it goes, and you know, uh, obviously we did get behind, and you know, I think we kind of went more towards where we got to, you know, ke play catch up instead of, you know, establish the run and all this. But, uh, yeah, so I think we did kind of have to put up points in a hurry if we, if we were going to be in that game. And so we kind of went away from the run from what I f how I felt. Uh, you, the offense, you guys, the receivers, quarterbacks in particular, are still confident you can get your passing game cranked up a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we, th I thought we did pretty well in the passing game and, you know, there's some things we got to clean up. Uh, but, uh, I mean, overall I was, uh, I thought we did decent in the throwing game and, uh, <clears throat> you know, that was probably, you know, like coach was saying, that might be the best defense we played this year. So, I mean, I, th I don't know what we, how we did stat wise, but I was pleased with our passing game. Uh, yeah, that was definitely a tough, uh, tough loss to lose in overtime. And, uh, um, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to it because I know it's going to be a good game. You know, they're a good team. Uh, I think they're pretty similar to us uh, just in the fact that, you know, they're a great, uh, they're a good team. And they're, you know, they're probably one of the better uh, group of five teams, in my opinion. And uh, I think that uh, it's going to be a good, uh, it's good uh, going to be a good game, you know. We got to come ready to play because, you know, they uh, they got the best of us last time, and hopefully we can get them this time. Give us a, an idea how it is to be a player. I mean, coaches are always saying that maybe we fans and they get bothered by a game more than players. Players have a shorter memory about things. <laughs> I mean, is that really true, Wyatt, do you think? And tell us how, you know, first game Weaver State, second game you uh, how you handle – you know, does this make you more prepared, make you want to work harder after you have a game like that against USC? Or, I mean, I know you don't rest on your laurels after Weaver too, but how, how does how does that work as a player? Um, I mean, to answer your first question about you know, you got I mean, yes, you do have to have a short memory. You know, you have a bad play, you move on to the next play. Because I mean, if you just if you get down on yourself or what, or get down as an offense or defensively or special teams, and you know. You're gonna continuously have to that, uh, have bad plays, but uh, you know how you come back after last week. You know I just think you know you watch the film uh, and you make the corrections that we need to make, and then we just move on, move on to Arkansas State. Uh, I mean I think people will be a little more motivated. I don't know if I don't know if they'll be more motivated, but I think you know they'll be more anxious to uh, get out there and you know get that bad taste out of their mouth. Have you noticed? Are practices different, a practice week after a loss, different than a practice week after a win? Or, I mean, I, I know you guys try to pride yourselves on being even or the same and work all the time. But do, have you noticed anything a little different? Uh, not not really. I don't I don't think it's any different. I mean, every week is uh, similar. I mean, it's the same. We're just, we're playing football. You know, we get to, we're blessed to be able to play football. And I think, 
you know, it doesn't matter who we're playing against. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, we're going to practice hard every single week. And the only, the only difference between this week and last week was we have less time. Is, is our system, the way it's developed, does it make it hard for other teams to cover the tight end with some of the things that you do pass route-wise when they think you might be blocking? Or does our system, is, is our system a good one for a tight end to catch passes in? Um, yeah, I think it is. And uh, I think... Uh, uh, you know, the coaches are doing a good job of, uh, uh, game planning and, uh, um, you know, we're doing a little play action and some, some drop back and, you know, the more, you know, we are able to run the football, the more play action will work, which will, it could play into the tight end's hands. Well, uh, well, so, uh, I mean, I, I, I think it's a great system for <coughs> any position really. You know we're gonna play to our our, uh, our strengths and whatever that is, and uh, so I, I to answer yeah, I think it is a great system for a tight end. Thank you. Okay, we have junior cornerback Jalen Davis. Jalen's going to recap the USC game quickly, and then we'll take questions on Arkansas State. Well, defensively, we didn't have that good of a game <clears throat> for the defense. You know, we had a lot of technical errors, a lot of missed coverages, and then we did a poor job at tackling. So we can just easily just correct those mistakes and move forward on to the next games. Um, that's about USC. Yeah, basically, we, we beat ourselves out there because there's no doubt in my mind that we could have went out there and played with them guys and won. But like I said, we just had a lot of mistakes out there that we just beat ourselves in the game. You had a good moment early on with the sack in the first play of the game. You lined it that way on the first play of the game, too. Did you like something like that? Yeah, it, it was good in the beginning of the game. Like I said, we had a lot of juices going. And then, like, towards the, how the game kept on going, just mistakes. Just mistakes just killed us in the game. Oh, that's a big focus this week because we know we got to get off third downs and can't have the offense, well, can't have us be on, be on the field too long, you know, because they, their offense is on the field a lot. So it's making us tired and winded. So we just got to focus on getting them, getting them off the drives and holding them. You've played against some receivers <clears throat> now. Where does Juju rank as far as the receivers you've gone against and how he plays? He's a, he's a good player, but. He's actually not nothing I, have, I haven't seen before, you know, but he's a, he's a good player. The, uh, I mean, I don't know how – have you started to watch really Arkansas State and stuff, anything, or you've been working on yourself? I haven't, but I heard that they have some really nice receivers and they have a great quarterback. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to go out there and see what's going to happen on Friday. Yeah. Like why it's at speed. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's something we like. Someone we like to have nice. Someone can be out there, competitive, compete out there. It's gonna be a great game, great battle out there on Friday. Oh yeah, that that was crazy. What happened to him? You know, I feel like the whole defense was like, we was like down. We was kind of sad feeling for him. But then we know we had to go out there and try to just play for him, you know, but we couldn't, we had too much mistakes. So that's what killed us. But I'm just happy he's okay and moving around and stuff right now. So that's a good thing. Away from the today. USC game, we'll preview Arkansas State yeah. and they'll take some questions. Okay. Yeah. 
If they can reach Steve, you me grab it. Jeffrey, you're okay? You're going to hold it? Okay. Well, I'm a little hoarse today, so I apologize. Okay. Just recapping the um, SC game. Um, you know, that's uh, it's absolutely not what we intended to to go down and do. And, and the, the plan was to try to get that thing to the fourth quarter. But um, we, we were not able to establish a, a good rhythm offensively and, and be able to continue to put um, – chunks of plays together we were always one man away which is an excuse but it's the reality and it's something that we got to fix on offense and I thought defensively we played well early um, we had some competitive downs um, really in the first first half of the game and then you know the I think the punt return broke our back a little bit in the third quarter um, and so it's a game that again um, maybe the best team we play all year most talented um, definitely the biggest and, and physical. Um, and so, you know, the sample sizes that we got when we look at Weber State game and the, the SC game are, you know, um, quite different for us in terms of not only the outcome of the game but um, and the opponent. And so um, there's things in both of them that we have to work on, and I think we're, we're – you know, we're trying to recognize those and we're determining those with the players and with the coaches as well. And um, obviously got to uh, to work to fix some things. There were some bright spots um, in the game. I thought, you know, just individually, I thought Anthony Williams played well. Travis Seafeld up front played good. Dallin Levitt was all over the place, um, played very, very well. Daniel Gray was playing well until he got hurt. Um, offensively, Ron Quavey and Tarver showed up. He's going to get more playing time. Thought he played well. Rashad played good two weeks in a row. Rashad's played well. Um, and uh, I thought Wyatt Houston made some big catches, um, contested catches. And so there were certainly some bright spots. Special teams was a major liability. We have to, got to get to that fixed in a hurry. Um, I thought our kickoff coverage was in our kickoff unit, including our kicker, was, was poor. Um, we've got to be better at that. And then our punt um, punt team didn't do a very good job. And multiple areas I'll just say that so I protect the innocent a little bit um, not very good at all so I recognize that it was a major part of a letdown in terms of the game and the momentum um, certainly lost a lot of momentum in the in the kicking game and in a game like that you can't do that you can't afford to do that you actually can't even let it be a wash to me you have to win the kicking game in a game like that so um, started being addressed this morning obviously we will this week on a short week as we go into Arkansas State and you know, this is a team that you know, we went down there two years ago and um, um, and played them, and it was a very competitive game. Um, biggest thing I remember that is, you know, I remember on offense um, we had some red zone issues early in the game, and they haunted us uh, later in the game. Um, had some turnovers in the red zone. I missed a field goal to win it and, um, and got beaten overtime, and this is – um, a talented team. I have a lot of respect. I've known Blake Anderson for a long time since my first year of coaching, so I've known him for 20 years. And um, we've been good friends um, for a long time, and I have a lot of respect for, for him and his program and, and really the program even before he got there. You look at Arkansas State, and I think it's six straight bowl games, and they've been um, conference champs there in the Sun Belt for a long, a, a lot of years. I'll just say that they have multiple rings in that complex and multiple trophies in that complex. So um, our guys are well aware of that, especially our veterans that went down there two years ago. And I think they know that it, they're a tough, competitive team with a lot of skill. They're very big this year on the D-line and then the front. Um, they've got some big, heavy D-tackles and D-nose guards um, up there. They always have skill, a couple transfers on offense uh, at receiver. And um, so I think they're very – very skilled op operation, a transfer quarterback that's a little bit of a ve of a veteran, and so be a very competitive game and one that we're looking forward to getting back um, at home in front of our home crowd and and um, getting back to to what we do best, hopefully. So with that, I'll go ahead and open it up. Starting the game off, first possession, you have a lineman move. Now you're first and fifteen. Does that change the play calling? No. I went to the second play and then came back to the first play. No. Yeah, I just switched it. 
No. No. How is Daniel Gray? Um, he's kind of day to day. Yeah, all the next ray, all the excuse me, all the X rays of the neck and everything came back negative. But um, yeah, he's kind of day to day. So we'll see. I'd say he is um, questionable for this weekend. We'll see. Same thing, questionable. It's day to day. Um, I'll have more information from our doctors back tonight, uh, late this afternoon, I guess, after practice. But he'll be a game time decision and, and really a day to day type of thing. Yeah, it's a great, yeah, great question. I, I can't speak about that comment at the end because I didn't see it. I really didn't. Um, I thought the hit on Dallin Levitt was legal. Uh, the guy used his shoulder. It's very, very close. You're talking about inches, and you're talking about that fast, and you're talking about even in a replay, it's fast. And um, I think the officials are doing a good job of managing that. Uh, I think it's absolutely good for the game um, because I think it's taken target zones lower. So uh, hopefully there's – hopefully, you know, the studies will show that there's less concussions and less injuries. So I think it's for the safety of the players. I'm, I'm for it. And I think it's good. And I think, you know, the way that the refs can use it now um, to either put one on that's egregious to put on a targeting and, and a foul, a personal foul – or to take it off, I think, is the right thing to do with all the technology that we have these days. And I think they're doing a good job of monitoring that. And, and it's, still a, it's still a tough call, though, Steve. Yeah. But I thought the one on Dallas was pretty clean. It was very impactful. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did. If you could have heard some of the comments he was saying on the way off, it would, um, it would fill up your notebooks. It was good. Tremendous, passionate uh, leader. Um, and, again, he's one that when I say you lead first by production, he's absolutely produced two straight weeks. And um, he's leading by his production, but he's an emotional, vocal leader too. Um, and I think our players recognize that and they respect that. Matt, I mean, you get a good group of five conference teams this week. Uh, you, know, you don't have to play a team of USC-level talent. So uh, with that in mind, I mean, how, how good of a test is this going to be? Oh, shoot. I mean, it's the same, you know, very similar program to us, and our players know that. I mean, you just look at what they've done the last six years in that program and, you know, the competitive game that we had two years ago, and our veterans know that. I mean, I've got three old linemen that played in that game. Um, you know, I've got a quarterback. Quarterback was on that trip. You know, I've got Lawan Hunt that was that played in that game. Uh, Wyatt Houston played in that game. I got a lot of guys that played in that game. They remember Arkansas State. They know, and it's a competitive team and a very skillful uh, team and a team that's going to be very aggressive on offense and and special teams and all the the tricks and the deceptives and the things that they're going to do in in the, in the kicking game and and on offense and I think uh, our guys remember that I remember you know this morning and after the team meeting I had one of those special teams guys say yeah this is the team with all the fakes and then we got to be on point this week you know and so they're already ready I mean they're they're anticipating that I think uh, no, good question. Very fair question. Um, I think we'll we'll know at the end of October. You know, and I, I'm not trying to put off that question because you can ask me at the end of October. Um, I think what I said is the last couple of weeks is still holding true that we're going to continue to keep evaluating it and changing some personal personnel around here and there. For instance, Ron Quavey and Tarver and Jaron Colston Green have earned the right to play more, so they hadn't earned the right before this. Now they have. Um, so Rashad Lewis continues to play well. He's going to continue to play. Andrew Rodriguez has been a very good and consistent receiver for us. Wyatt Houston's catching everything thrown his way right now. I um, think we're catching it all right out of the backfield. So um, are we good enough? I mean, I think that that'll all you guys will always judge that on the 
end of the year record you always do. So, you know, we threw it well against SC. There was still stuff out there. Uh, we didn't even try to throw it against Weber. So, you, you know, I don't know yet. So how would you evaluate how Kent handled the USC game? Um, kind of like everybody else, um, including me, some good stuff and some things to get corrected. Um, got to get his eyes right in a few things, missed a few throws, made a few throws that were very, very competitive, and I mean on the money. I mean the ball to Jaron Colston Green is on the money. The ball to Chad Artis, Artis could have been caught, should have been caught in the end zone, the, the play later. I mean those are as good to take off balls two in a row as, as any other quarterback that's played around here. Those two balls were spot on the money. Uh, the fourth down throw to Wyatt Houston was on the money. He had some other ones that are, were ripped in there, and um, he missed a couple that we all wish we could have back as former quarterbacks um, and get his eyes right, and he probably plays a little bit better. And you know what? He plays um, – he has probably better rushing stats if he um, – if we make, make a couple blocks in front of him where we missed a couple single blocks and we just got out-athleted a little bit and, and missed. But um, I was pleased with him. He He played well. Um, he knows he could play better. I think he can play better. I can coach him better, too. How much did the boy tick guy play at, ten, at Pittsburgh? I can't answer that. I don't know that. No, it's too dang early in the week. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You, you, you win. I You stump me. Well, I no yeah, idea. I know he's their second leading rusher. I already heard that from our D staff. So, I know we have to account for him in the run game. Yeah. Yeah. What's your thought on grad transfers? You know, I have a favorable impression of graduate transfers because um, I think Utah State has benefited. And, uh, you know, a lot of head coaches, they vote in head coaches' meetings and have opinions based on what they're low, what happens, you know, what does that mean for Utah State and what does that mean for us? And sometimes things are very selfish. I haven't thought much of it, Steve, outside the big realm of things. Um, but I know this, you know, um, you know, we've had Ben Wysocki, I think, started over half the games last year at offensive line, UCLA grad transfer that came in here. The other half of the games, he played a lot. LT Filianga was a two-year starter the minute he walked in. You know, a week later, it was a two-year starter. Only kind of got derailed because of some injuries, you know, late in that junior year. Um, you know, we've had those two. Uh, Daniel uh, Gray was a four-year transfer, not a graduate transfer. But we've had success with those guys. Um, and you know what? On the flip side, we've had a few young men out of here graduate from here and go play at a lower level, and they've had a good college career. And they got to come to Utah State, and they played a minute or they played a little bit, and they moved, they graduated and did what they did, and then they moved on, and, and they had a favorable experience and got more playing time and probably better stats and, and those kind of things, and I'm for that. I mean, you only get one chance. And so just in terms of the three years here so far, I'm in favor of it because I think it's a, it's been a win-win from everything that I can see from guys coming in and also guys leaving. We've had some guys leave. I don't know if you can really answer this with I wish Stevie would have stayed at Utah, though. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Is that fair? Okay. Um, I haven't thought through it in terms of that, Jason. I mean, that's a fair question and a good question. But, you know, they played two good offenses in Toledo and Auburn. Um, you know, and in terms of some of those guys that that, that do have experience, um, I think that, um, you know, when their back's against the wall, they'll rally the troops. And uh, that's where those leaders will emerge. And, and uh, so I'm sure, sure that that's going to happen this week for them. Yeah, I think they've been opportunistic. Yeah, I think they've been aggressive and opportunistic, and and taking the in terms of taking the ball away, and they have some skill in the back end that, shoot, they can make you pay. You know, if you, you know, you put a ball on the ground, or or you uh, you're sloppy in your route running, they'll read your routes and be able to jump it. They're they're aggressive out on the corners.
Good. All right, guys. No problem. Okay.